Hey, podcaster, I'm about to ruffle some feathers with why your show is not growing and why even though you are showing up consistently, you are spraying and praying all over every single social media platform, why your show is staying stagnant and how sometimes we can have a really big impact on people with a really tiny audience. And by people, I also mean you, because not only are we using our podcast to inspire others to leave an impact on the world, but we are using our podcasts so that we can make more income because more income equals a bigger impact. So are you ready to hear my number one thing that I see across the board with all my production clients of what happens when they fail to follow this one simple rule? Are you ready? Welcome to Beyond the Downloads. I'm Jen, your podcast bestie, here to tell you there's so much more about podcasting than just those numbers. So before you throw in the towel, you better listen up. We're diving deep into the heart of what makes podcasting truly special, from storytelling to connection, and yes, even healing. Think of me as your podcast life raft, ready to help you navigate those choppy waters of this podcasting world and the podcast overwhelm. From understanding the therapeutic power of sharing your voice to the practical tips to grow your show without losing your ever-loving mind. If you're ready to ditch the hustle and create content that leaves a legacy, a tsunami impact, no more ripples, whether you're launching your first show or looking to take your podcast to the next level, I'm here to help you grow, launch, and yes, make some money from your passion. Let's make your podcasting dreams your reality. It's time to go beyond the downloads where your story becomes a legacy. I know you want me to get down to the nitty gritty and let's do this fast. But the, really, you're going to roll your eyes. You're going to give me pushback because every single one of my clients does, including yours truly. I do this too. But when I see the most growth for my clients for my own show is when I go, are you ready for it? Micro niched. Ah, I know we're pushing people away. You're so scared. You don't want to do this. But here's the thing. If you are not focused on that, that one niche, if you're not focused on that one thing, you're speaking to too many people. And what happens is you blend in. And yes, the stats, according to the amazing research over from Podmatch, shout out to Alex over at Podmatch if you want to check them out. It's like a dating app for podcasters. If you want to check it out for free, Go down into the show notes, check out Podmatch and find your next best guest or be a guest for someone else. Anyways, the micro niche. Here's the thing is that when we start talking to many, we sometimes fail to talk to no one. And although there are only 340,000 active podcasts, yes, you heard that right, 340-000 active podcasts out of the over 4 million indexed, you still need to be unique. You still need to stand out. You still need to be your go-to. And let, let me tell you, I know it's hard. I don't want to just be the, you go to Jen for podcasting support. I don't want to be that person. I want to be that person that you come to my book about storytelling. You come to me for business support. But, but in reality, I'm known for podcasting. So people come to me for podcasting. And when they end up in my programs, they realize that we're building their podcast as a business asset, but we have to look at the big picture. And that's where I get to go into like helping them find their story, helping them find their gifts, helping them find their offers, how to stack that up, how to plan out, you know, for 90 days, because we do it one quarter at a time, how to plan out for 90 days, the content that'll actually feed into their businesses doing something that they enjoy. But the thing is, is it's hard to want to talk about one thing over and over again, especially if it's it, if it's your business, because you are so sick of hearing about it. Trust me, I'm sick of hearing about podcasting. But the thing is, is that if you don't have a micro niche, it's going to be harder for you to stand out. And your micro niche might just be you flipping some things around. It might be a bigger picture, but micro niche down to something like, I don't know, weight loss for Christian women, um, podcasting for healers that practice Reiki. Um, what other ones can I think of? 
um, online business for mo- single moms with more than one child. But, so we're we're taking that niche and we are going down by our audience. So what happens, like for me, when I start talking about more of the spiritual realm entrepreneurs, which is where I'm going to the healers, the people that truly understand my message of like podcasting is a healing modality, that I'm going to start talking about things like podcasting for your soul, which means how to use podcasting to emotionally drive things. If you're a hypnosis, somebody who practices hypnosis and you do coaching with hypnosis, how to use podcasting to help your listeners and inspire them to want to work with you deeper without being skeezy because we all know those NLP tricks that leave us to fantasy marketing, which leads us to empty bank accounts, frustration, and we quit and we go back to working for the man. And we don't want to do that here. So when I want you to start thinking about this is I want you to start thinking about if you don't want to go into like, I help people pick out the right microphone in my job. Let's say that's the only thing I do is I pick out the right microphone for the person. That doesn't sound fun to me, but I can take podcasting, teaching podcasting, and I can micro, I can niche it down more into podcasting as a healing modality. Plus, podcasting as a healing modality while growing your business. And then we go one layer deeper while growing your spiritual entrepreneurship business. So now I become known in the spiritual entrepreneur business of somebody who is well known for how to use hypnosis, how to set up back end offers, how to do the marketing in a way that feels good and aligned because I understand my audience more who wants to know how to ground, how to be part of something that's more than just themselves and how they can grow in a way. I also know my audience and my micro niche so much because As healers, sometimes it's harder to charge. So helping people with their price structures once they come into my programs. Again, I don't outwardly always talk about these things, but I'm really focused on that one person, that niche of here's how podcasting can help your spiritual business versus here's how podcasting can help your online business. So I've niched it down a little bit more. When you have that focus, when I'm not talking about one day, my favorite outfit, one day, how to go fishing, the next day, how to do this. And I'm not saying that this happens, but I see this a lot in podcasts, especially with my clients, where it's like all over the place. One day we're talking about exercise and eating healthy. The next day we're talking about business. The next day we're talking about how to do um, or how to show up as a single mom. The next day we're talking about something else. What happens is it really confuses your audience. And yes, there's probably some other people out there that all of that mixes together, but it's hard to sustain growth because it's hard for people to follow along. And our goal is to be consistent so that every week you want to come back and you want to say, Hey, I want to listen to this person's show. It's part of my routine, my weekly routine because it moves me forward in some way. So you want to move your audience forward in some way, whether that's educate, inspire, entertain, you want to move them forward. You want them to put you in their schedule. So you have to be consistent. You know, that's just a given. That's another thing. But the the number one thing is you have to be some sort of consistency in your messaging. And I'm not saying that you can't talk about other things. This is one of the things that I find in my zone of genius, which my clients really love is they come to me with all these different ideas and all these different topics. And I find a way to put it under an umbrella where we can talk about it, but we can always tie it back into our core theme of our podcast. That core theme needs to be a niche. That core thing needs to be what you are going to be unique for. Don't know what you're going to be unique for? Go back to the C in CPR audit a couple weeks ago, and you can really look into what makes you unique and stand out. The whole CPR audit is great for anybody who's stuck, wants to give their own. I also do them one-on-one. It's 45 minutes with me, and you pre-send me your business stuff, your podcast. I look at it, and I give you a 30-day action plan. It's a really low investment where you get me one-on-one with you, podcastcpr.com. 
if you want me to do that for you. But we really need to nail this down because being a jack of all trades, even in the, the world of 300 and what did I say? 364,000 active podcasts, even then you're still not going to stand out. And let me tell you, there's five point something million listeners. So they're listening. Multiple people are listening to the same show over and over and over again, because there's not a lot of other podcasts out there. So why not set your podcast up for success? It takes time. This is not a, I'm going to make it to episode seven and be famous. Maybe you already have a huge audience and it's an extension and yeah, your show will go fast, but it is a slow, steady process. You have to have the consistency. You have to be willing to at least give it a year, sometimes longer. I had to had one client that we worked for three years and she can got consistent slow growth. And then by year three, she popped off and all of a sudden everything started happening for her. We 10 X her income. We 10 X her bank account. We 10 X everything. And I hate the word 10 X, but we really did 10 times everything. She's getting 10 to 20 times more downloads. Um, than she was. So the same with the income, the same with her signups. We've had to restructure her group programs. We've had to restructure her whole business because it, she grew at that year three mark because she stayed consistent. Was she making money along the first three years? Yes. Was she seeing slight growth? Yes. But something changed. And again, that change in our marketing strategy. And I'm going to say right now, the one thing, the one social platform that I see actually working to grow podcasts is TikTok from my clients. When you go viral, when I've seen them go viral on Instagram, I don't see a bump. But when I see them go viral on TikTok, I do, do see a bump both on their podcast and their YouTube channels. So just throwing out that out there, take that at face value. It doesn't mean it's working or not working, but that's what I've seen consistently in five different clients that I'm working with. So I just wanted to put that out there, but we got to get you focused. We got to get you clear on your unique message because when you do the spray and pray of all the things you want to talk about, unless you're a purely entertainment podcast and that your audience member is going to want to listen to every one of those things, you're not going to get traction. You're not going to get the growth. If you're not going to put the keywords in there, you're not going to get the organic growth either. And then if you're not going to market it, then you're really not going to get any growth. So those are other things that we need to talk about later in the day, but I don't want to give you too much because we don't want to overwhelm you here. And these are short and sweet. So I want you to start thinking about what's your unique standpoint for your, your, your podcast. My, one of my, my clients and I'm her former coaching client. She's she, when she presented it to me, she's like, well, what's your stand for? What's your stand for Jen? What do you stand for? If you were going to die on a hill and you're going to stand for something, what was it going to be? Shout out to Robin. She's over at the cosmic creature podcast. 